Hi everyone, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to save you a lot of time. Now, if you're like me, you like using scriptable objects, but you don't like the amount of time that it takes to set each individual one up. Well, what we're going to do today, we're going to create a handy little editor utility, which is going to take care of this for us. And the way that it's going to take care of it is it's going to take in a CSV file, a comma separated value file, and it's going to automatically create all of our scriptable objects for us. But before we start, I just want to thank our official sponsor, Gigatank 3000. Make sure you go and check them out on the website and on Twitter. Links are in the description below. So, if we take a look here, there's multiple ways that we can create CSV files. You can open Notepad and type out all of your information line by line. Or there's an even quicker way if you use Excel, or in my case I'm using LibreOffice because it's free and I'm cheap. We can generate a CSV file from this spreadsheet. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We have our enemy's name, followed by a numeric value, which is going to be our enemy's HP, our health value. Followed by another one, which is going to be the enemy's strength. And followed by the final one, which is going to be the XP reward that we get for killing this enemy. So let's start by generating this file. So if we file save as, this should be exactly the same in Excel as well. In our save as type, we can see that we have our Excel formats, but right down here we have text CSV. We select that and save. We should now have our CSV file. So if we pop back over, we'll take a look. And I'm using the editor folder. And the reason I'm using the editor folder will become apparent in just a minute. So inside the editor folder, I have a CSVs folder, which has a enemy CSV. Now we can open this up. This should open up in Visual Studio, I'd think. And the only thing we really need to do is we get we can get rid of this last empty line. That'll just save a sanity check later on. So as you can see, we have all our values, but this time each value is separated by a comma. Perfect. And this format matches up perfectly with our scriptable object skeleton, which is enemy name, HP, strength, XP reward, name, HP, strength, XP reward. So how do we go about transforming these five lines into five individual enemy scriptable objects? Well, to do that, we're obviously going to need another script. So if we pop over into Unity, we can right click our assets, create C sharp script, and we'll just call this CSV to SO, CSV to scriptable object. And we'll open this in Visual Studio. Now, this may be slightly different to many of the scripts that you've written before, as this isn't going to be part of our game. This is going to be only accessible inside of our editor. So we'll just clean up a few things first. We don't want a start and update method. We don't want to inherit from mono behavior. We don't need our system.collections namespaces. But what we do need, we need to keep Unity Engine. We also need to add in using Unity Editor. And we're also going to need to be using the system.io namespace as well. And we could make this as generic as we like. We're just going to be creating enemies. But you could easily have this creating weapon scriptable objects or any sort of item in your game. So the way that we'll do this, we'll just create a public static void. And we'll call this generate enemies, just like we always would. But we're going to add an attribute to this class. And that attribute is menu item. Now, what menu item is going to do, it's going to add a custom menu item, funnily enough, to our toolbar at the top of Unity. And when we click that item, it's going to actually fire off this method. So we'll start by naming it. We'll just call this utilities slash generate enemies. Now, you always need a parent folder name. You can't just have generate enemies or else it'll give you an error. So we'll save that. And just to show you what I mean, we'll pop back over into Unity and I'll just show you where that shows up. 
So as you can see at the top here, we have a utilities tab and inside that we have our generate enemies. Now currently clicking it does nothing because our method is completely empty. But if I was to put in just a quick debug.log and we'll just put in here, if we save that, pop back over and then fire off a utilities method, click that generate enemies, we see in here. So just by clicking that, we don't need to start the game, we can just fire off this method from the editor. So now we can start with our CSV file. So what do we need to do? Let's take a think about it. Well, our CSV file comprises of individual lines and each individual line has four individual values. So we're gonna to wanna to split this file up by lines and then we're also gonna to wanna to split each line up by the values, the separator being the comma. So first of all, what we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna to want to save a reference to where our CSV file is. So we'll just create a private static string and we'll call that enemy CSV path. And our path is inside of our editor folder. So we'll do a slash editor slash CSVs slash enemy CSV dot CSV. That is a lot of CSVs. And just to clarify that, we see here we've got editor CSVs enemy CSV. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to split this out into individual lines. So the way that we'll do that, we'll create a local string array and we'll just call this all lines. Set this equal to file, which is part of the system.io namespace, dot read all lines. And then we need to pass in the path. Now the enemy CSV path isn't the complete path. That's just the project's local reference to it. So we need the rest of that path. And Unity actually provides us with that. We can call application.datapath, which will return everything from, for example, your C drive to wherever this project is stored. And then we can append onto that our enemy CSV path. So basically what that is, is your computer's location for that file. Simple as that, may seem complicated, really isn't. So now that we've got all of those lines, we can iterate over each one of them, and we'll just use a for each loop. And we wanna check for each string S in all lines. So for every string in our all lines array, we want to create another string array, which is gonna be our split data, and we'll set that equal to S, the current string that we're working on, dot split, and we'll pass in a comma as our delimiter. So now split data will contain an array for each line. So the first one is gonna contain skeleton 50, 10, and 10. You get the idea. So now that we have all of our split data, we can just go ahead and create a new scriptable object. So our scriptable object type is enemy. We'll create a new enemy, call that enemy, and we'll set it equal to scriptable object dot create instance. And then we need to pass in a generic type, which is going to be a enemy type, enemy. So what that line's going to do, that's going to create a new enemy scriptable object that's going to be completely empty. So now all we need to do is pass in all the values. So we've got enemy dot enemy name is going to be equal to split data zero. So the first index of our split data, which as we can see here would be skeleton. Next, we want to set our HP. So that's going to be enemy dot HP is equal to split data one. Now we see we get an error here. This is because we're trying to put a string split data one into an integer enemy HP. And it doesn't like that. So we can cast this to an integer. And that's really simple to do. That's just int dot parse. And then we'll pass in the string. Now obviously that could be prone to errors. If you make a mistake in your CSV file and the second instance here isn't actually an integer, this won't work. So you could do this in multiple ways. 
you could add in some sanity checks to make sure that this is actually an integer. You could do a try-catch block around this. But with it being an editor script, I don't really find that's necessary if you're working on your own. If you make a mistake, you're going to find that out because this method is going to throw an error. It's not going to affect any gameplay, so you can deal with that however you like. So let's just go ahead and finish this up. So strength is also going to need to be parsed, which is going to be split data 2. And finally, enemy.xp reward is going to equal int dot, oops, int dot parse split data 3. And you'd go ahead and you'd add in one for every element inside of your scriptable object. So now we want to save this. Well, the way that we do that, after we've assigned all of our values, we'll call asset database. That's just Unity's knowledge of all the assets within your project. And we'll do create asset. So obviously this is just going to create a new asset for us. And the asset that we want to create is our enemy and then we need to pass in a path where we want to save this so our path we put in as assets slash enemies slash and then i'm going to put in my enemy dot enemy name and then we want to make sure we finish that off with dot asset now the way that i've done that i've done string interpolation there the way that you could do this if you don't really know what this does is you could have asset slash enemies slash and then plus enemy dot enemy name. But I just like to use string interpolation like that. And then finally, the last thing we want to do, we want to make sure that we save our asset database. So outside of our for each loop, because we don't want to do this every time we've created one, we'll call asset database dot save assets. And this should be a script completed. One thing I do want to point out is this path name has to, uh, sorry, the path, not the file. The path name has to exist in your project or you'll get an error saying that the directory doesn't exist. So as you can see, I just have my assets slash enemies folder ready to go. And in here, you could add as many sanity checks as you like. So for example, one that I'm going to do, I'm going to check if split data dot length is not equal to four, then I'm just going to put out a debug log and I'll pass in the string followed by does not have four values. And then I'm just going to return because I know that there's an error. And you could do this for as many as you like. So I've talked enough now. Let's see this in action. Ooh, there was one important thing that I've actually missed here. Our CSV to SO is an editor script. We don't want to access this outside of the editor. So, so we don't want this in our game. So we need to put this inside of our editor folder. Because what's special about the editor folder is anything inside is not compiled and built into the final game. So we need to remember to put that inside of our editor folder. I don't actually think it would even let you build the game because the menu item attribute that we've used inside is reliant on the editor. So I think you'd get an actual build error if that was left outside. So now it's the moment of truth. Does this work? If we click utilities and then generate enemies, we see enemies is pre-populated now with a demon, a ghost, our imp, our skeleton, and our witch, all with the values from the CSV file. And it's just as easy if we want to add a new enemy in. So for example, we wanted a zombie. We want the zombie to have 60 HP. It's going to have 25 strength, and it'll give us 40 XP when we kill one. If we save that out, pop back over to Unity and rerun our generate enemies, we see our zombie gets added automatically with our values. And I think that about does it. You could expand on this and tailor this any way that you like. You could even add in an extra path up here, create an extra method, 
which will create all your weapons from a CSV file, all your items from a CSV file. You can do anything with this. So I hope this has been useful for you. That's all I've got for you today. So I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bite-sized Unity hints and tips.